Hey guys, this is Frogs Master 595 and here's part 2 of talking about the Frog Show Season 2. So, first thing I want to get out of the way before talking about any characters is that only for the Frog Show videos will there be 1080 quality. Um, for normal ones that won't be that, just to save storage for those reasons. But quality's still fine, obviously. They don't look that bad. Good enough. So, yeah. But, so that means for uh, part one of talking about season two, in this video, they will not be 1080p. Just the actual Frog Show episodes will be. But, we talk about Nightmare Maker. You know, he's more aware. Um, Zai's a little bit smarter. And he's not, obviously, he's not as chill. Um, he gets more angry easily. So, he's different from King Pig. King Pig also has more, uh, comedy with him. He made a couple puns back in Season 1. But, Nightmare Maker, no, he is different. But, we mainly, we talked all about this, all these main characters. But, um, this won't be as long of a video, but we can still talk about the... Other characters that Honky Tonk and her friends met. So, yes, let's go talk about all those that they met. So, I guess we'll start with these frogs. So, this was one of the people they met, Green in the club. Uh, so, Nightmare Maker had enslaved this guy and told him to dress up like a hipster. Probably just because the Nightmare Maker, you know, thought that would be funny or whatever. Just a watch him look dumb there. People think he's actually a hipster, you know. But he honestly, really, he wanted to be an artist. He mentioned that. So, you know, it's not like how every frog, if they're dressed up like this, that means they're, they actually like whatever they're dressed up like. So he's not actually hip. He never wanted to be hip. But, wanted to be an artist. So, in season three, we'll see more of him. Well, we'll see, like, everyone that Honky met, we'll see more of those characters more than these other frogs and other turtles. I know, like, her and I like to move it, Latin and I like to move it, they had purposes in season one, but they were just helping. They're not exactly main characters. Obviously, they were there a lot for season one to help, but they didn't have really any of personalities, but they still help. That's the important thing. Get the party started. So, she had that really cool girl voice, um, had a bit of the Rainbow Dash kind of voice, but then again, kind of not really. It also kind of sounded like a girl blue fire, I guess. Not exactly. Not, not a, not a high-pitched blue fire, but similar in a way. A bit like a raspy, a raspy kind of girl voice. That that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, raspy. But yeah. Um. Now this, this she wasn't slaved by Nightmare Maker. She had to stay in that laundry room area. But she's actually a party frogs. Um. She wasn't actually meant to dress up like this. This is actually how she usually is. You know, raspy voice, crazy hair. Um. A little bit of the hippie kind of clothes. Not really though. Um, and yeah, she's just the cool kind of frog. She always tries to sound cool, act cool. Yeah, so that was get the party started. And she likes parties and coolness. And then there was Green, yeah. So, he was another enslaved frog, and he was in the worst of conditions. He was the most hurt. Um... Now, when I made Nightmare Maker, when, well, not when Nightmare Maker said, but when he was saying how he had gotten smoke and all that, that was a reference to the seller of these frogs. Um, I can't remember the seller's name right now. Um, uh, J, J, C Frog, I think that's what it was. Um, yeah, all of those frogs, um, that I put in the description, like, they didn't know of the smells or whatever. And obviously, he smelled a little bit like smoke, so that was a reference 
anyone caught that, but yeah, that was a reference. I just made Nightmare Maker do it because he's evil and stuff, so yeah. But Green, yeah, he wanted to be a poet, so it's it's kind of like in the club again. And, you know, he had to be dressed up like this, but he actually wanted to be a poet. So, you know, basically an in the club again. But, yeah, that was his kind of story. Um, so, he's basically exactly like in the club. The only two that are exactly similar to each other. So, yeah. Harlan is the one that likes to sing... Obviously, he was singing, um, he's kind of like Mini V2, because he was willing to help, and obviously, he's one of the happier ones, he didn't get as angry, he never really was, um, you know, he likes singing, he likes trying to be happy, and, yeah, he, yeah, he's just, he likes to sing, and, yeah, I make him, made him try to sing from when he, when he sings, I've been everywhere, I just changed the words, the lyrics. So yeah, you could probably tell what I was trying to do with Harlan. Uh, I met him nationwide. Uh, well, he's different from Harlan. Obviously, he isn't singing. And he, well, he doesn't like to waste time. He was trying to get things done. Uh, he was fixing up the pipe somewhat. Uh, he's actually technically the one that did it. He pushed the button, but... You know, he was, he was, he was kind of annoyed with Harlan, but not too much. But I met him nationwide. He just didn't really want to mess around. Wanted to get things done, but that's also similar. Well, not really similar to the next person I'm going to talk about, but I met him nationwide. Also, he's Roadhog Biker. He didn't explain that yet, but I know that he is one. So, we'll talk about that a little bit in Season 3 as well, so there's something to know. But, let's go on to... Nope, King Roar King. Yeah, we're going to talk about him now. Now, first off, I would like to say that... King Roar King, well, the first time you saw him in Episode 84... You... That was literally the first time you've seen him, because... I started the Frog Show Season 2 before I got him. Yeah, I got him on June 16th. I've had him for a while. June 16th. I started the Frog Show Season 2 on June 15th. You've not even heard him really sing yet. I'll upload a video of him tomorrow, but here's a little preview. You heard a preview of him in one of the Frog Show episodes. I think it was 85. He sang for a little bit. Here's a preview. There's a preview. Works perfect. So you already know that. So don't need to worry about... Oh, it's not moving right. Yeah, everything moves on this. So that's always cool. To get a perfectly working 30 flasher with a box, by the way. It has that. Show that later. But I need to talk about him. So... King or King... Um, he's basically like the later Nightmare Maker, except a good person. Originally, he wasn't planning to be. He was more the bad person, but he still, well, he still ended up being good. Um, he wanted to, obviously, his only way he was going to come to Gemiland, he needed to be challenged because he wants to show everyone how good he is at things. He has to prove it and all that, and obviously, he got bombed. Because he got beat. But King or King, uh, he also likes to try to do things alone. He, does, he thinks he doesn't need help. He thinks he's the best of the best. And yeah, not really like get the party started. I said she's cool, but she's not like that. She just likes to dress cool. He, King or King, thinks that he's king. You know, he's able to do things all by himself. He's able to get things done. And he's also not like one of those lazy kings that doesn't do anything. But Mini V2 came with them secretly, obviously. But he didn't get too mad about it. So, he doesn't have anger issues. But, King Roar King. Almost forgot about Love Machine here, but... This guy is also... He's not really like these two. Um, he's kind of just like the... Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, kind of sounds like Lucy in the Sky, but not really. This guy... This guy is not hip. 
I mean, that's a little kid, but he's not rich. He's not as much as a douche. But Buff Machine, well, he's probably the one because at least in the club and Green Yeah, at least they wanted to be something earlier in their time. He wanted to be an artist. He wanted to be a poet. Love Machine. Uh, he didn't. It's not really talked about him much. Kind of like with Mini V2, this guy, not really much. He just kind of sounded like a lower pitch Lucy in the sky. So, not much with Love Machine. But uh, one thing you can say is that uh, well, it didn't take him that long to decide to go to Jemmyland. So, I mean, I guess that's good, but. Not much about him. We'll hear more about him, though. But at least all we know, there's at least one thing we know about Love Machine, and that, that he's a lover. Yeah. And that he's super, super rare. But let, let, let's go on to these four, because these are the last four, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, let's hope these are the last four, and I'm not forgetting someone. No, it's the last four. I already know it is. It obviously is. Because first these four were shown in the season two. Then it was these three. And then it was the two pigs. It was Love Machine. And then it was Roar King. So, you know, yeah. These are the last four I need to talk about. So, four Beagles. Beagle Mania. I'm still glad to have these, obviously. They're cool. Never thought I'd ever get them, but I did. And I got these before the Beagles. So that's all nice. But let's talk about each and every one of them, because at least these guys actually have really good personalities. So, he I'm going to talk about him first, Yellow Submarine, because he has the least of a personality. He's a little shy-ish. Yeah, shy-ish. And he's kind of, he was a little bit sad in his early time. He, you could tell he was... He wasn't really happy, but he wasn't really mad either. He kind of went along with things just for going along with them. And, you know, he got happier as he got back to Jemmyland, but he still was kind of the basic personality one. Didn't really have one, really. He's just kind of the meh beagle. Just the meh. The meh, yeah. But still kind of just went along with things anyway. Kind of beagle. So, yeah, that's him, basically. When I'm 64, however, it was the optimistic, happy-go-lucky kind of beagle. Uh, well, go lucky, but he was happy. Um, was trying to have fun with his life, even though he's old. You think that he would be the cranky one just because he's old. Well, no, I make him the happy one. And he doesn't act like when I'm 64. When I'm 64, acted kind of weird for the little bit that he got with Redneck Woman. But he's the happy kind of beagle, upbeat, as he was dancing with Trigger. So, yeah, happy kind of beagle. I'm a Loser was the annoyed, angry, distressed beagle. That because of his song and everything that had been happening, he lost his box. And for these three faults, really his, to be honest. But these two, I guess, had a little bit to deal with it. Him, with him not believing a couple things just because he's angry all the time. He thinks that he can't do things just because of him being angry. But he still did a few things, too. Just because he's angry, he thinks that he can't do anything just because he may be a little bit frightened. But then we find out he's the real one frightened because he won't even do anything. But at least he will because at least he wants to try to see if Honky's parents were in the closet. But not really because they already found Honky's parents. They were trying to figure out the problem. He was trying to find a problem in the closet. But he wouldn't because he was too frightened to go in the closet. But he was the angry, distressed kind of beagle. Because he thought he was a loser and that he always would be. Yeah. Well, this beagle is able to go really fast, and as soon as I say the three things this beagle is, the video will end because this is a quick beagle to talk about. Rich, hip, and didn't care about anyone. Beastie's good beagle now. Okay, that's it. The peace.